Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman David. Today we're taking a look at three central midfielders Arsenal should sign in January. Remember to subscribe if you're new, smash that like button. But anyway, let's get this party started. It's no secret that Arsenal have struggled to find the right balance in the 23-24 season. And despite being on course for more points than last season, Arsenal aren't playing the same kind of fluid football as last season. A big part of that has been the shake-up in midfield. With Thomas Partey struggling with injuries this season and Arsenal selling Granit Xhaka, meaning that they're only playing one of their regular midfield three that took them to second in the Premier League. Whilst Partey has largely been replaced by Declan Rice, Xhaka's number eight role is still up for grabs. So today we're gonna to take a look at what kind of profile that Arsenal should look to recruit for. Now before we take a look at what Arsenal need, what are they missing? from last season. Grant Xhaka's role was somewhat of an advanced number eight. In possession, he was tidy, focusing more on ball retention than progression, but regardless, he was generally looked after the ball really well. But it was in the final third we saw the best of Xhaka. Usually joining the striker inside the box, Xhaka became an aerial target for crosses and provided a major goal threat. However, when Arsenal would attack down the left-hand side, Xhaka would make intelligent runs, sometimes underlapping the winger, whilst other times overlapping. This role saw Xhaka play some of the best football of his Arsenal career, and he's rewarded with excellent attacking returns as he scored seven goals and registered seven assists in 37 Premier League appearances, his best season in England. But Xhaka wasn't all about offensive play. Whilst he still had rash moments in him, Xhaka brought a real protection to the centre of the pitch for Arsenal. His experience as a defensive midfielder gave him the composure to defend the midfield in a low block, which is an underrated skill set when recruiting midfielders. All in all, Grant Xhaka was a vital cog in Mikel Arteta's Arsenal machine, and the inability to replace him has seen the Gunners struggle to find a consistent midfield and play the same kind of incredible football that we saw last season. So what kind of profile should Arsenal be looking for? To play Arteta's style, any new midfield signing needs to be technically strong, but to play an advanced eight role, they also need the ability to receive progressive passes. In terms of creativity, they don't need to be a playmaker, because that role is where Martin Odegaard excels, but they need to be able to link the play with neat passes and clever touches, which is very important to Arteta's combination play. Perhaps most importantly, a new number eight needs to be a reliable goal threat, ideally with the physicality to be a threat in the air. Combined with this, you'd expect them to be good off the ball and have attacking instincts, not only to find pockets of space, to score from themselves inside the box, but also to create space for teammates by taking opponents away from the ball. In particular, this helps to create 1v1s for Arsenal's wingers, a cornerstone of Arteta's attacking philosophy. And finally, they need a good engine to consistently perform this box-to-box -box role for 90 minutes, and the physicality to stand up to challenges in the Premier League. Defensively, this role will require an awareness to defend in the middle of a 4-4-2, but also the mobility to be able to jump and press from the tip of a 4-4-2 diamond when the Gunners move into their pressing structure. So who could Arsenal target for this role? Honestly, Arsenal already have two players in their squad who could do the job. The skill set we've mentioned is basically Declan Rice, and he could make this role his own. However, with Thomas Partey out injured, Rice is required at defensive midfield. Meanwhile, Kai Havertz definitely has the potential for this role. He's shown in the past he can score goals, he has intelligent movement required for this role. Not to mention the strong technical skills to be a link man in between the lines. He's also got a good defensive work rate to press as a number 10, but just lacks the natural awareness of a number eight, although this is something that he could definitely improve with time. I can definitely see the thinking behind the Havertz signing, but I don't think we'll see the best of Havertz in this role before the end of the season. Douglas Luiz from Arsenal is an obvious target who could do the job from day one. Recently, we did a video explaining why this move makes so much sense. So if you want to take a deep dive, check that out. In short, Luiz will be a Premier League ready option who's been schooled in the possession play at the City Group. This development would make Louise able to step straight into the Arsenal 11 and make a serious contribution, much like the way Leandro Trossard did when he signed from Brighton. The only problem with Louise is he wouldn't be cheap, but he's probably the safest option and would have the most immediate impact. 
Atalanta's Edison is a 24-year-old Brazilian who could facilitate the goal-scoring aspect of the role, with four non-penalty goals from his opening 30 matches of the season. At the time of recording, Edison is the top-scoring central midfielder across Europe's top five leagues. But if you're looking at midfielders from Atalanta, Tenen Coupe Miners is far the most complete and best suited for this role. An excellent passer, ball progressive from deep. Over the past 18 months, Coupe Miners has been deployed as more of an attacking number 10 to grace success as he scored 10 goals in Serie A last season, finishing as Atalanta's second top scorer in the competition. His newly developed ability to receive well-advanced areas before bringing in teammates and his excellent passing would bring real balance to Arsenal's midfield, whilst his non-stop engine and technical skills make him an ideal candidate for the role. Another option from the continent is Athletic Bilbao's goal-scoring number 10, Oyan Sanset. Whilst the Spanish midfielder does play as a number 10 in Bilbao's 4-2-3-1, the positions he tends to take up inside the box are more of a free 8 than a second striker, suggesting he could have a similar attacking output from a deeper role. As well, Sanset might start at number 10, but he very much drops off into a number 8 position as he waits for play to catch up with him. Possibly the most complete player we've mentioned, Sanset is the player I would definitely see lining up for Pep Guardiola at Manchester City. As well as the profile we mentioned when looking at this role, Sunset also has a great weight of pass and is very good at playing through balls into space. He's also a player who's consistently on the move but rarely gets attracted to the ball, often resulting in him being free in the box. What's more is that the system at Athletic Bilbao is very similar to Mikel Arteta's Arsenal, with the wingers holding the extreme width and depth of the side and the advanced midfielders taking up the inside channels. So Sunset would realistically be able to perform in Arteta's system. Still 23 years old, Oyan Sanset ranks third among central midfielders across Europe's top five leagues for expected goals per 90, with only Martin Odegaard and Jude Bellingham actually scoring more than him in the last year. With 13 goals in La Liga since the start of last season, Sanset has the potential to be Mikel Arteta's Ilkay Gundogan, a technically strong and complete midfielder who could play 6, 8 or even number 10. But there are other options too. Rather than bringing the goal-scoring midfielder, Arteta could convert Martin Odegaard into a primary goal scorer and secondary playmaker, bringing in another playmaker to pick up Odegaard's creative duties. 18-year-old Arthur Vermeeren looks like the latest super talent emerging from Belgium. Hardworking, energetic and technically fantastic, with a weight of pass and vision of a top quality creator, Vermeeren could be a star of the future, likened to the great Xavi. Asan O. Draugo is another youngster who's burst onto the scene at Schalke. Just 17 years old but already performing in the second tier of German football, Arsenal could pick up the talented youngster on the cheap if Schalke get relegated to the third tier. Meanwhile, Laiza Samardzic is a player who's a little further along in his development. At 21 years old, Samardzic has been flourishing since leaving RB Leipzig in 2021. Last season, he created more chances than any other player under 21 in Syria, ending the season with four assists. Arteta could also return Rice to the number eight role that I believe he was signed to play in and bring in a new number six. If Arsenal were to go down this route, I think Martin Zubamendi is the standout young defender defensive midfielder for a progression-based side. Zubamendi is very reminiscent of Rodri when he was playing in the Liga, would bring a wonderful ball-playing ability to Arsenal. The biggest question marks would be his physicality, but with time in the gym this could easily be solved without taking away anything from his game. All in all, there are a lot of options for Arsenal to strengthen their midfield. With the vision of Edu and Arteta, I'm sure the Gunners will find a creative solution in January. But anyway guys, what do you think? How should Arsenal strengthen their midfield? Field. Let me know in the comments below. I've been Statman Dave. Subscribe if you're new. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?